Okay, so to start off this video, let's talk about the solution to last video's uh, programming challenge, and that was to print out whether a, a line is horizontal, vertical, um, positive, or negative uh, in terms of its slope. And so you're going to say this program looks a lot different than it used to, and that is true, and let me explain why. So um, if our two x values are equal, then we have a vertical line, right? But if that's the case, then when we do this division to figure out our slope, x2 minus x1, they're equal. So we'll get 0. And then we're dividing by 0. And calculators can't divide by 0. And so we use an if statement to avoid that. So if the two x values are equal, then we print out the line is vertical, x equals, and then x1. Otherwise, we just do our normal slope, our normal y-intercept, and then we print the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b, right? And sometimes it'll give you a um, it'll give you a b of of zero, um, and sometimes it'll give you an m of zero. And so theoretically, I mean, we could change our our print statement, but you know, I'm okay with the m value being zero, as long as we don't get an error. Um, okay, and, and here's something that I didn't talk about, is that we can actually, we can nest if statements. So we, you see how this if statement is indented? Uh, that means that it'll run within that else. So like I said, inside an else block, we've got a code, or a block of code to run. That includes this if statement. And then inside that if statement, we have code to run. So it can be nested to like an arbitrary depth. We could have another if statement in here, right? We could have another if statement inside that and so on, right? It, it could go to theoretical infinity, but we don't, we don't want to do that. That would look ugly and that would be a, a bad program. So it's okay in this case to do this. Um, so if, if the slope is equal to zero, the line is horizontal. Otherwise, uh, if it's less than zero, the line is negative. And finally, otherwise, it's positive. So uh, we can try running this. We'll save it. Uh, this is just with the same values that I was doing last time. So the equation of the line is y equals 3x plus 7. The line is positive. Excellent. Uh, if we change this y2 to be negative 20, then we get negative 10x plus 20. The line is negative. True. If we change the two x values to be the same, it gives us the line is vertical. x equals 4. Excellent. Um, and then if we change the two y values, then it says uh, the equation line is y equals 0x plus 10. The line is horizontal. And this is all true. So all of the cases uh, work. And yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Now on to the rest of the video, which is loops. So before we understand loops, I'm going to introduce you to, to something. We're going to first save our program as loops.py. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to something called a list. Uh, or an array. There's a there's a number of things that you can call it. Um, and so, what is a list? Well, a list is is <laughs> as it sounds. It's a a list of of objects, a list of of variables. So, let's let's create our very first list. Um, so let's say like favorite numbers equals. And then to show a list, we use these square brackets. And then we separate values uh, with commas. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Those are my favorite numbers. Um, you know, 35, also important. And so if we print out our, our favorite numbers, uh, we see that it prints out like this. Uh, but we can also access individual elements of the list. And the way that we do that, again, is with the curly, or is with the, uh, the square brackets. So I'll do square brackets, and then to get the you would think that to get the first element, you would do, uh, you just put a one there, right? But if we run it, we see that we actually get a two. And the reason being is that lists in programming are what we call zero indexed. And what that means is that they start at zero. So the first element corresponds to the zeroth index. The second element corresponds to the first index, the th and so on, right? So zero gives us one, three gives us four, 5 gives us 35, right? And that's just accessing the variables in our list. 
Now, let's say that we want to, to go through all of the numbers in our list and print them all out, right? Well, we can use something called a, a for loop, okay? And so uh, a for loop basically has a, has a list, in Python at least, has a, a list and a variable. So we'll say for number in favorite numbers, print number. Okay, and this is why I love Python because it's super intuitive and in other languages, uh, this is less intuitive and it's harder to teach, but in Python, this, this really makes sense. So for every number in favorite numbers, okay, we have six numbers, then we're gonna print out that number. So we should see uh, six numbers printed out and we run it out and we see one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, our, all our numbers get printed out. Okay, that is super cool. What else can we do with a for statement? Well, we can we can dynamically generate these these lists. Okay, and what do I what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's say that we want the list uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to some number n, right? Whatever n may be. So, uh, actually, we're starting at zero. Sorry, zero, one, two, three, and, and so on. Uh, so, what we would do for that? So, we do for a number in range. Let's say we want to go up to ten, right? We're going to print number, okay? Same thing that we were doing before, right? But instead of going through the favorite numbers, we're going through this built-in function in Python that gives us the list of the integers up to 10. As you can see, it starts at 0 and goes to 9, which is, which is kind of weird, but it's how programming works, and, and it'll make more sense over time. So there's a lot that you can do with for loops, but that's, that's the basic idea, is that we can iterate over elements of a list. We call it iteration because each time that this code runs, it is referred to as an, an iteration. Um, we, could, we could also do things with these numbers, so print number, number plus one, right? That makes sense. So now we actually get the numbers one through 10. Um, we could do number times two, right? All of a sudden, we get our, our times two times table and whatever. Um, the other thing that we can do that's kind of cool is we can we can nest uh, we can nest loops. We can say for number two in range ten. It's a terrible variable name, but hey, uh, print number times number two, and you'll see that we we print out uh, all of so we we start out with the zeros. And we go to the ones, and we go to the twos, and and we're printing out a times table basically, right? Um, which is super cool, right? This is like, and it, it printed it out in in zero point zero seconds, which is awesome. So that is a list and a for loop, but there's another type of loop that I want to introduce you to, and that is a while loop. So uh, let's let's delete all of this code. Uh, maybe let's not delete it. If we press command uh, slash, you can comment out all of the code. And what that means is when you run it, none of it will, will run, um, but you still have it in your file. So if later on you want to use it, you can uncomment it and you can run it, which is, which is super useful. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to a while loop. So let's say we have some number and it's equal to zero, right? We can say while number is less than 10 print number and then in theory this would this is going to go on forever right because because what this will do is every time it runs this block of code if that condition is true it'll run it again and if that condition is true it'll run it again and so on and so on but we can change the value of number in here so we can say number uh one way to do this is number equals number plus one uh a short form for that is plus equals one. That means number is number plus one. Um, and now when we run it, we, we get exactly the same value as our for loop, but we're, we're just using a, a while loop. So over time, these are going to are going to show these. So so over time, these two loops are gonna have different applications and different purposes, and, and you're gonna you're gonna find that they are super powerful. Um, they are typically you can use either one, but there are there are cases where a for loop is better and cases where a while loop is better. Um, it's a little bit clunky in a case like this to use a while loop, right? Because 
for loops are, are built for this. Uh, you say for uh, i, and usually people say i, just I don't know why it stands for integer, I guess. So for i in range 10, print i. That seems a little more elegant because it's only two lines than the four lines here, right? But there is definitely cases where, where a while loop makes more sense. Uh, for example, if you don't want to, to increase uh, the number every time, then a while loop might make more sense, right? But, but for now, you don't really have to worry about that too much. And that's gonna kinda end the lesson part of the video. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a a challenge. So so now I'm gonna give you a challenge. Um, I'll get you started on this challenge, but here's here's what I want you to do. I want you to determine uh, whether given some number, determine whether it is prime. Okay. So here's here's the what I'm gonna set up for you. We're gonna have a variable number. It could be any, we'll just go with integers for now. 15 maybe, doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna have a Boolean condition is prime. Uh, initially, we're gonna want that to be true. And then we're going to want to write a loop that checks all of the numbers uh, from, from two to the number itself. Okay, uh, and we're going to want to see whether they divide into that number. And if they do divide, then prime will be false. So a few things that you're going to need to know for this. Um, the first is that range can take a lower bound as well. So if I do if I do print uh, range from two to number. Right, something like that. It's going to print out our range, so it goes two, three, four, five, all the way up to uh, to fourteen. So that's going to be super useful to know that. Uh, the other operator that you might want to know is the modulo operator. The modulo operator, it it sounds fancy, but it really just means uh, the remainder. Okay, so um, for example, if we did. Uh, print the modulo operator by the way is, is represented by the percent sign so if we did uh, print 11 modulo 2 that means when you divide 11 by 2 what is the remainder so in this case it's 1 so to see if two numbers uh, divide equally or divide evenly rather so to see whether whether 2 is a divisor of 11 we can do uh, 11 modulo 2 is equal to 0 and that's going to be false because 2 does not go into 11. But in the case of, of 10, it's going to be true. And in the case of like 18, it's going to be true. If we change that to a 6, it's going to be true. But if we change it to a 5, it's going to be false, right? Because you get a remainder. Hopefully that makes sense. Using these facts, you can, you can build a program that uh, will determine whether this number is prime. And it's going to be relatively inefficient, but it's going to be super powerful because computers are super powerful at this type of thing. And yeah, I think that's that's one of the more interesting programs to write for me. That was one of one of the first programs where I really saw the power of programming. So I challenge you to do that, and I will see you in the next video.